Right. Um. So for the chat as well. And hi, Crip. How you doing? Um. This is like not going. Vegas to has be... gone clear in here. Yeah. <laughs> you so we're not gonna have like any. I must have time um, to gather my will. Any podcast? No interview. Nothing. It's just. Well, basically the way I the way I imagined it was that I was gonna call you and I'm gonna say hi. How you doing? And then uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> that is essentially my plan. Wow. Okay. Well. What do you mean? I guess we've already made it to that point then. Yeah. So uh, I mean, so far so good. I guess. I actually took your um, call convert to DB build, and uh, I've been fiddling around with it a lot. How much have you been playing it? Uh, well, I'm like ninety nine point six or so. I was gonna go to a hundred, but it's um like my my arm has been aching like i have nerve damage so uh i think i probably played too much poe this time uh i think i was hoping to play a less click intensive build like down below it's not like a click intensive build i'm not saying that but it's it's certainly more click intensive than playing like specters or something so i think i think i kind of overdid it a little bit and with like <laughs> diablo resurrected coming up in a couple of weeks i want to I want to be able to function more or less. Yeah, that's fair. I feel the like DB is super clicky, but I guess it kind of depends. Like did you mentioned the state of gear that you have on your character is um, the um, the behead idea, so you're not really smacking that often in the juice maps because of the behead support, right? Uh, I try to I try to not hit stuff with the actual dominating blow. Yeah, like. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I saw I saw your like awakener kill and I gotta tell you the difference the difference is rather large in the minions staying alive, like Necro versus Guardian. Mm -hmm. Um it's rare that any minion, including the Domblo minion, dies on that fight at all when I'm playing. Yeah, no, I figured because, as well. uh Yeah, and like your DPS was fine, but your dominating blow minions were staying alive for like four seconds. Each. Yeah, and then so, I spent like two yeah. minutes running around. <laughs> like to give you some some perspective, I usually have full Domblo on that fight, and my character doesn't even have resolute technique. I have like sixty percent accuracy. Like it, I just don't really care. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, I've been fiddling around with the PUB. I'm going to move my um my gear and everything over to my Witch just to get some testing it's on the lower budget, still using the tablet and do the the uh, actual Awakener fight with it. And I'm like 99% certain it's going to end up basically what you said, where the mini is not going to die. I'm pretty sure that even the Carnation Host Chieftain would stay alive in that uh, in that type of fight as well, due to bone barrier and everything. Yeah, I think, uh, uh, well, the bone barrier helps quite a bit because if you like, uh, if you put the, the bone armor on like left click, mm -hmm. it has pretty good uptime. If you consider that with the minions have 20% more life, it's more like minions have like 30 to 40% more life, which is quite a lot. I also don't use the minion damage gem. I don't know if you're using that still. I'm going to bring up your profile here. Uh, I've been feeling in the POV. So, I think I still have it in the game at least. Yeah. Well, it's it's definitely the best damage gem. You're right about that. But mm -hmm. um, I mean, so there's like a different philosophy on, on the build making, like, I think I think you do a pretty good job competing with all the other build guides out there, but you're kind of funneled into this narrative of having like the biggest DPS number. Like I think the typical build guide, and I'm I'm not criticizing you. I think it's every build guide, and I I have full respect for you trying to compete with them, but I think that the narrative is let's get the biggest DPS number possible, and let's just say survivability is okay. Right? Like, that's kind of how you make a build guide right now. Yeah, it's kind of the name of the game. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I'm, I'm not, not giving you that critique. I just, I, I, don't, I don't see it that way. Uh, like, I'm willing to lose 10% damage to, like, double the health of my minions. Right? I'm mm -hmm. okay with that. Um, Sorry. Uh, yeah, and I think the biggest thing is actually not not the bone armor. While it certainly helps a lot, it's the uh, the bone offering, uh, especially if you get the offering bonus. 
So the offering bonus is to make your own block really good because you go from negative 50 to negative 75. It's actually a 50% increase. So it's like massive. Mm -hmm. But um, for the minions, they go from 100 to 125. So, and like the bone, the, the offerings get the plus two minion skill. Yeah. So like the minions have over a thousand life on block and they have near cat block just from the offering. Uh, like my animate guardian has cat block. Uh, I was actually talking to uh, Lighty, and he was saying like he he wouldn't use Animate Guardian on anything because there's just some things that kill it. And he said there's a, there's a map. What is the map? Acid Caverns, where if you get like a certain exile, it just like hits the minions like a million times. Yeah, it's like no the, the, the Domblo, the sorry, Dominus uh, map. Oh, sorry, the Dominus fight in the Acts, the guy that shoots the fire projectile. It's basically that guy uh, with the same mechanic with his projectile and just shotguns. It's like the same problem with like a, a hard rolled map when you're going to harvest and there's a, a stack of blue, uh, the blue colored monsters. Uh, they have some lightning spells that just shotguns everything. Like I've, I've seen a 25x AG die into that with like 90,000 HP. So it's pretty brutal. Yeah, actually I've leveled after level 90, like 99% in Lex Proxima. And I've done that map like a hundred times. And my, my anime guardian has never dip below 90. And I think it is the life on block because most minion builds they use uh, they use Kingmaker, yeah. And there's an argument for Kingmaker, but I just don't have one because I'm playing <laughs> SSF. So <laughs> whatever, I don't really care. Are you what sure that you argument don't care? is, I can't get one. Yeah. Um. So uh, on my anime guardian, I'm using the chance to intimidate on hit weapon, and I I crafted a a fizz damage blind. Uh, so and it's a uh, it's like the I forget what it's called. It's the dagger that has block, right? Yeah. So my anime guardian, and I have a spring leaf, uh, the the upgraded one with like fizz damage taken as cold or something. I corrupted it. Like I I found like ten of them, so I corrupted one. <laughs> I got lucky. So, yeah, you get like 6% regen, which is a lot, because my anime guardian has like 87,000 health, I think. And he has cap block, like cap cap. Yeah. Like the, the offering plus the shield plus the 6% on, on the dagger, it's 75 block. So I think that combined with like the 1,000 something life on block and the fact that he has 80 all resists, because that's where I put elemental army for the exposure. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So I actually... I think I did almost lose my anime guardian. I played a Spectre Summoner in Delirium, uh, and I think it was that map. Like I was I hit like ten and I locked out or something. <laughs> but uh, with this character, with that setup, I have done Acid Caverns sixty, seventy, maybe a hundred times because it's it's not a bad map. It's like a small circle. Yeah, it's actually pretty smooth. What's your take on um, on Sign of the Sin Eater for the AG? Enemies inflict elemental ailments uh, so on you instead of allies. Yes, yeah, so I have the ailment reduction. Uh, I, I was I was going to ranger to do elemental avoid, but I found it too restrictive on gear for SSF. Like I would just use bad gear, just to just to be ailment avoid. Uh, but I I looked into it and there is the there's a really good block cluster. Uh, it's actually ridiculous. Uh, like, like I think it's, I think it's one of those broke. I can't believe it's actually a, a, a passive thing. You can see the flexible sentry. Yeah, I was looking at it when I was uh, fiddling with the necro version. I was like, let's let's look at how we can do most damage with it. And every time I just came back to, well, it's just better to do flexible sentries. <laughs> and then I looked at your pub again. I was like, whoa, okay, <laughs> you've already checked this. But yeah, they're pretty disgusting. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know these existed. I didn't see these on any builds I looked up before. But uh, yeah, that makes so. I think uh, ignite lasts like half a second on me. I was trying to cap it through the the jewel implicits, but I've been pretty unlucky with jewel implicits. Uh, I use so many. I know the odds. It's like, I, I I like one stun one. It's like ridiculous. I thought I'd get like stun capped, but whatever. I guess that that wasn't in the cards. Mm. Um. But uh, yeah, the the, the flexible sentry uh, makes it so I, I take barely any ignite because it's not that big a deal, right? Like to take an ignite for half a second, you don't really need a flask for that. Like if you die in half a second to ignite, you probably die to the hit is what I'm I'm thinking. I mean, it's... yeah. And I mean, in your version, you're running the stone golem, so you're like one over a thousand life region as well. So it's 
It's kind of chill. Oh, it's more than that. Uh, it's it's like uh, 1,400 life regen. I think the life regen on the POB doesn't include the multiplier on the necromancer uh, bone bone armor. It's, I don't know what it's called. It, it, it gives 20% uh, life yeah. rate of recovery, that's which true. is really nice for that. Yeah. Oh, definitely. That's really juicy. So I was looking at um, the comparisons with the POB, and it's like the, one of the first things, obviously, as uh, as a softcore build guide, guide creator these days, was obviously like starting to compare bone offering with love for, uh, can't even speak with flesh offering. And it took me like two and a half minutes to be like, okay, we're, we're not going to use flesh offering. That's just not going to happen. Um, but I think that Domblow is like one of those builds for a softcore environment that really brings out this whole defensive aspect to it, which is really nice because you're getting kind of forced into it one way or another because of the inherited play style. I think it's pretty fun. Yeah. Um, did you... Uh... Uh, yeah, I think Domblow is like a really insane skill. And um, I noticed that you you always tell people to to do the, the Guardian Domblow. I think Guardian Domblow is, is probably the choice for a league starter if you want to like invest nothing in it. Yeah. But I think the moment you start investing anything, Necro kind of takes over. Like the moment you can do like cat block, life on block shield, it's just it's just skyrocketing. Like the survivability is not comparable. It's funny I that can you just mentioned AFK it. in like 83 maps. It's funny that you mentioned that because the last two days I've been talking about this on stream because I wanted to do some tests uh, as I did this whole zero to hero project on the on the Guardian because I, I decided to choose one of my more commonly uh, suggested league starters, which was the Guardian version of this. And basically it was like, as long as you're going Impale, you don't have to invest anything. You can literally go with whatever you find. Doesn't matter how casually you play it, you can defeat everything in the game. Might not be the best at it, but it's going to be able to perform. Uh, but anything harder than that is going to be a mess to deal with. And then um, after you had talked about the Necro versions, I've been starting to compare it. So yesterday I said that I'm going to test this, which was supposed to be today, but I got stuck with last epoch. <laughs> so we're going to do it tomorrow. And I'm most likely going to be reworking the entire guide into a Necromancer version. But I will obviously first be fiddling with the high budget version, see how much we can actually push it for the softcore juicers. <laughs> And the really big thing is the the offering bonus on chest, and that kind of puts it at odds with a budget build because you need it on a six link. So you need yeah. like a you need like a hunter level eighty six link, and that's like if you're talking day one, day two, I don't think that's coming too cheap in a trade league. Oh no, I, I definitely think there's a place for for a guardian. Like I I absolutely think so. I was looking at the um, the coal conversion guardian was actually pretty fine. Uh, the problem with it was the uh, uh, surviving. Uh, I'll, uh, I had the same issue with surviving of the specters, and uh, no matter what version, obviously, especially the monkeys. So I went with Arena Master eventually because it was just too much of a hassle to keep him up, which is not something the Necromancer would have struggles with. But I think the biggest perk of the Guardian version, at least before or pre-red tier maps, which is essentially where the majority of the casual players end up being in white and yellow, Having Sanctum of Thought with Time of Need allowing you to just completely neglect the existence of curses on maps is so comfortable to say in a build guide, like, you can roll anything. <laughs> Doesn't matter, right? That's one of the big things that spoke for me for the Guardian, but I mean, the more I've tested and tweaked it, I still feel that the Necromancer just comes out on top. The only investment on a low body end you need for coal conversion is just a try grip Everything else is essentially the same as you would do on a Guardian. Yeah, I um, I don't care for most of the curses, honestly. Uh, it's obviously just vulnerabilities is pretty out of whack. Mm. Um, the other ones aren't so bad. Like temp chains, uh, I don't know how much attack speed your your final build has, uh, but mine has a lot. And like I have a I have like a twenty seven weapon with the attack speed enchant. Like my my dom blow attack time with the frenzy charges is like point one eight or something. 4.63 attacks uh, so... per second. At least in the POB you sent me the other day. Unless you made changes. Yeah. No, I have, I'm playing like a week. Um, no, that's my character, so I, I didn't... That's just my character. Yeah. Um, that's insane, though. 
I, I like I, I I don't care at all about temp chains. Like temp chains barely feels any different if I'm just whirling blading everything. Yeah, that's uh, true. which I am. Um and like that that's really the other big curse, right? Like it's temp chains and uh, and vulnerability, the big ones. And then the other ones, it's not so bad. Um I've been trying to get a second unset ring, uh, but I haven't been successful in getting a good one. I've been trying to actually roll Shaper Assassin Mark instead of uh uh, elemental weakness. Mm -hmm. uh, I think elemental weakness is actually more minus resists, but I really like the uh, frostbite with increased effect because it actually makes it better than the regular curse for defensive purposes because the chance to freeze goes up, while on the actual gem the chance to freeze never goes up. So that's pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, but Assass assassin's mark is really good because you have the the power charges. The, it just the the base crit sucks and the multiplier is a bit low. No. Yeah. So. I've been trying to roll. I have I have the rings. Like I have uh, level eighty five unset shaper rings. I've been trying to roll them with assassin mark. And mm -hmm. if I do that, I was going to use uh, enduring cry. Um, and I think I think I can probably just yeah get the resists. The the difference in resist from the endurance charges in uh, elemental weakness just like make a point to keep the endurance charges up. Like I think I like I've generally played characters like that, and I think it's an okay solution. Like it's not that. Not bad to do that. That's fair. I think like crit minions in general is like for me and for a softcore perspective, it's like you just want to stack the uh, vicious bite, have vengeful commander, and precise commander, or medium clusters, and every every cluster you add just spreads your entire rest of your character so thin, and to make up for like lack of HP nodes, which is essentially what most people in trade uh, softcore would uh, would uh, discard to get those uh, clusters going would have to make up for some actual life rolls on those clusters and suddenly the prices on those it just goes to insane numbers and crafting them can be a pure hell to deal with some in some cases as well you mean on on the on the large cluster jewel right yeah, because yeah i think the i think the crit and the vengeful commander i think those both prefixes you can't get the life on the medium correct um but like the um the large ones they're not really that hard to craft it's more that they're super uh, annoying and they turn expensive because it's like you can just alteration regal craft uh, and you can use the imprints if you want to be lazy and the problem is that you have to finalize it with an augment crit which is going for like 10 or 15 x on in uh, trade league at the moment and good luck self farming an augment crit craft so <laughs> it's pretty annoying unless of course you get oh, like i know that was a thing yeah it's just insane like, they're pretty easy to craft it's just big nuisance to get those three pre uh, perfect uh, modifiers with an open suffix there is another strategy where you get like the prefixes and then uh whichever suffixes you want doesn't really matter you get two suffixes and then you remove non-crit add crit which is quite common and cheap because it has to take a suffix because it can only give vicious bite right well, I don't think common and cheap is is really the right word for those like that was remove non I got that bad actually I got to 99 uh, last league, uh, and I died a lot. Like that was that was uh, a bit of a weaker character, and I got to like 99 something this league, and I think the total number of remove add, um, I think is two, and then I had one add. I think I had an add defense, aug defense, and I think I had. Uh, I actually just deleted it. I don't even use it. Like, uh, I think I had a uh, remove non-fizz, add fizz in this league. I just didn't use it. Jesus. Just pretty sad. I think I found two AUG crafts. No, three since the uh, Harvest nerf. And one of them was just a augment non-influence modifier with a new uh, new mod. <laughs> That's it. And there were two targeted uh, augments since, uh, since the Harvest change. is pretty devastating. But like in trade, it's... it's um, it's all about the whole and the supply and demand, right? When it comes to being common or cheap, because it's like yeah. remove non add. Those crafts are very rarely used by the top crafters as well, which creates a, a surplus of uh, supply of them on the market. So the price goes down until someone makes a video showing, oh, you can do this, and then they go up again. That's usually how the market behaves, at least in softcore. One thing I haven't seen that I think is, uh, I, I saw you were talking about crafting like a shaper shield. That's really crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll, I'll give you the, the, pro, the pro craft tips for shaper shields. 
you want to use the uh, re-roll with a high chance of the same mods. Yeah, they're more uh, likely. You can craft block spell damage, and then it rolls the shaper spell block on it from that. Uh, like that, I, I had I had yeah. m quite a number of shields, like the one that I rolled. Like I was rolling like five different shaper shields, and I mean I like the one that I had because I got uh, like a whole lot of life, and I didn't really need anything else. Um, but yeah, I was looking for a block spell block, and recover life on block, no. and life <laughs> shaper shield. Which, like, if you put it in the calculator, you can't wrap your mind on why you should ever attempt that in solo cell found, right? Yeah. But actually, with the with the more likely thing, it's it's not too bad. It's one of those. It's one of those like uh, shortcuts. We actually finished um, one of the best league uh, spectre helmets using that craft ones uh, a couple weeks ago. We finished off the suffixes, and then when we did reforce prefix uh, or keeping suffix, sorry. Uh, we ended up anytime we had only plus one or plus two level of minion gems, uh, because we, it's not finished without plus three, right? So whenever we had only that modifier, we would um, we would do suffix camp for change and then reforge more likely, because of the tags that comes with that actually increases the uh, the probability of hitting uh, minion damage, and it uh, it almost always gives the same mod back with the obviously the chance of one in three of hitting one two or plus three to suffer the minion gems. That's actually how we finished one of those helmets. It's like one of those crafts. Man, that I don't know what the chance uses. on that is, but I think you got. I think you got a bit lucky on that because I've been. I have. Uh, I have a, a bone helmet elder that I've been trying to roll, and I've been trying to use like the more thing, and it doesn't seem to respect the minion life. It, like I've had it, I've had it flip my minion life to minion damage. Like every time I've done it, I've done it like a dozen times. Well, the problem with those is no, that the know. minion life has the minion uh, life and what is the gem uh, tags, right? Whereas the minion damage has minion damage. Um, I don't know if my heart actually have to double check. The problem is that it shares so many mods with the minion damage one. So it's like it's very likely that you're going to hit, hit one of them. Here? Sorry? Do you think that plays a factor? I, I don't I don't know. It should. Because we we started doing I, I, uh, that craft with mini life and mini damage, assuming uh, sorry, with mini damage that we were gonna get that, but more often than not, the mini damage would just turn into mini life instead. So we had the opposite problem basically. I see. So um, only... I also saw that you commented on the the taunt and blind life jewel that i have yeah i have like five or six of those because if you do uh like the attack harvest craft there's not a lot of attack mods because uh mm -hmm. you can't get two attack mods right so you can only get like fizz or cold or fire or whatever and then the suffixes there's the blind on attack taunt on attack and there's like two others the right? accuracy and and yeah and then it just leaves one prefix open so you you can get life. It's not like common, yeah. But yeah. it's one of those things that I think I don't know one in fifty or something. You're gonna get like a really good one. I have like five of them, and I wanted to mention the the reroll with much more likely. Uh, I when I found the the life cold and the double, uh, it had like all low rolls. But I did that, and I think I used five of them, and every single one of the five respected all four mods. Like every single one kept every modifier yeah so i was pretty happy to see that i feel like it looks the... like some mods are really sticky with the with the more likely and some are not yeah but i think it's like when it comes to sharing tags with um with other tags because to my understanding like the reforge more likely is so hard to grasp your head around and that's why i think it's like one of those hidden gems it has so many good uses but very few people know how to behave around them or even consider uh, when they see look at an item be like okay but this one we might be able to do something with that and then start looking at the tags and how it behaves right um i think that's why we don't really see many people using those crafts but i didn't know that about the taunt and blind so that's pretty juicy and uh, but speaking of um our differences in, in builds in general um do you uh, remember the build creation panel i hosted uh, at xlocon no sorry <laughs> that's all right uh, that's I'm not a... sure. 
I'm not sure I watched that. Uh, like, I had a number of commitments and meetings throughout that event. Like, I was not on the event grounds more than, like, 30% of the time it was running. So I, I could have just been somewhere else. <laughs> That's right, dude. Um, no, because one thing uh, we talked about, we had Mathil, Rise, and um, Engineering Eternity there as well. Um, we talked about how we approach creating build guides, right? And ever since I started playing Softcore, because I used to race in Hardcore for about five years before I moved over to Softcore, because I felt I could make better guides that the majority of the community would actually have use of. It's obviously the most people playing Softcore, right? So that's why I did that change. So what I mentioned was that the way I create build guides is that I take whatever I want to do and I take the core aspects of the build, maybe that I want to make a build around a unique or a specific skill or specific ascendancy or whatever, right? Or a specific you know, synergy with some mechanics. And then I take that build and then I make a POB that just does the absolute most damage it possibly can. And then I start slaughtering and you know, cutting off some of the damage from it to make sure that the defense is all right. And um, that's basically <laughs> what Mattel said was that he does the same because he's playing in soft core for the most part. And, uh, but he's okay with lower <laughs> defense than I am. And Rice KT had the opposite the way. He was like, okay, I'm looking at the build. And he's just going to stack as much defense on it as possible. And then he starts cutting off defense to get in damage, which is obviously more focused for hardcore, right? And I think it was pretty interesting because with the start of a build, right? Because essentially you got to start somewhere and there's so many different things you have to take into consideration when it comes to designing a build. I mean, you've been playing PoE for <laughs> way longer than I have, and I've been here for ages, it feels like. So how do you approach it? I mean, since you're playing Soul self I mean, do you go with the defense first or offense first, or how do you approach it? Uh, well, I I mean, I, I approach it either way. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I, like I've approached it both ways, maybe even almost equally, but I, there's, a, there's a few other factors there uh, that I think are really important for a build, uh, especially for me that uh, are not part of that list. So uh, I only play one build a league. Uh, like I don't have a league starter and I'm like, screw that shit. I hate, <laughs> I hate playing with your campaign. And I hate it enough that I'm only going to make one build per league. Fair enough. Um, so one of the things that I consider is I need, on top of the metrics, on top of doing damage and having survivability, and I come to some kind of medium between the two uh, that I'm happy with. But yeah, sometimes I start with the survivability. Sometimes I start with the uh, with with the DPS. So I don't know. Um, I think either way is totally fine. But yeah, so one thing is because I only play one build a league, and I've fallen to this trap before. Uh, I can't play a build that has um, a short gear curve. Um, mm -hmm. So what that means is I need I need to have like a carrot on the stick in front of me for a long time in terms of gear, especially for a solo cell phone. Uh, like I've played when the slams came out, I played a slam character and I quit after three days because <laughs> like, okay, so I'm going to play for a week and increase my weapons damage by 8%. Like that's just not interesting. Yeah. Right. So if you, if you look at my character, um, like, so like the, the the weapon, I need to farm uh, fear essences until I roll attack speed and not cold damage, with an open suffix. So I need to farm lots of those. Mm -hmm. The helmet, I need to I need to do delve to farm uh, bound fossils, uh, to try to roll that. And then I I wanted to do lab, so that's another gear project. Mm -hmm. um, I was gonna go dual curse. Um, so the curse is the only caster prefix on a hunter chest. Yeah, with the so, reverse caster. Uh, yeah, so my first, I have like three chests like that. So uh, unfortunately, I haven't gotten a good suffix. But the idea is that um, I try to get uh, a high item level hunter chest, which is not that hard in solo cell found. Mm. And then I try to get the offering. And for a temp piece, I do, suff I need three suffixes because there is a caster uh, suffix. So if he doesn't have three suffix, you can't do this. No. I don't want to waste their exalt in chat right now. <laughs> so you need you need three suffixes. You can beastcraft prefix the suffix just to fill them up if you want. And then you do suffixes cannot be changed. Add caster through harvest to get the extra curse. So that's a pretty aspirational chest, but that's like one of the first things I try to get on this character. But that means that uh, I'm going to be chasing uh, two curse rings, right? So that's a lot of harvest. That's it's actually pretty hard to get. Uh, like I think you need over eighty-one 
uh, and 84 if you want the top two resists. So it's it's not that easy in solo cell found to get an influenced ring with the right influence on an unset base. Okay, yeah. that's not that easy to do. Like I don't have that many of those. I actually think this league mechanic was pretty good at that. That's fair. That's fair. Um, I was for an amulet. I was going to use a plus one uh, int or strength skills, which I had one because Jinx Juju is like super rare. But I I ended up getting a Jinx Juju after I made that amulet. <laughs> um, I I had the aspiration to try to do a enchanted double corruption on Triad Grip because every league I've ever played, I found like ten of them. No. Um. I had the aspiration to get like a belt enchant, and it's a lot of work to get two really, really good ghastly jewels, right? Yeah. Uh, the shield, a lot of reroll lifes. Um, so like it's it's a lot of it's a lot of stuff, right? It's a it's a long, like pretty linear gear curve. Like it's it's quite a mountain to climb. Uh, like my gear one one level below ninety nine was quite a bit worse than this, and at ninety seven quite a bit worse, and at ninety six quite a bit worse, right? Mm -hmm. So, I I need that to constantly be a thing. The truth is that my character has looked the same ever since I hit ninety nine, and I actually have less motivation to play it. So that is a massive factor. If if even if I find a build that does a lot of damage that has really good survivability, if the gear curve is like flat, I'm not gonna play it. I'm just not going to do it. Like I know I'm going to get bored after like three days and not play the league anymore. That's fair. Um, I think that's the some... other thing. Uh, the other thing is a quick one. Uh, I can't have a build that clicks more than like a few times a second because like I, I'll, I like I that's yeah RSI nerve damage. Yeah, stuff. you mentioned that. like I made I made a really good lightning strike build last league <laughs> and I just couldn't play it. Ten attacks per second, no multi strike. This is not happening. This is not I'm not not playing that build. That's really sad to so. hear. Uh, I think th something that I find really interesting, like I played um, in the back of the days, I only played minion builds. Um, and nowadays I play mostly spell based builds with uh, at least a couple of minion builds here and there thrown in the mix for nostalgic reasons. But something I really like with minion builds in general is, is the upgradable path for it. There's always something that you can upgrade. I, even the mid max version I did with Spectres back in Harvest League, I mean, we, we pushed that shit up to half a billion Shaper DPS, and there was still plenty of room for upgrading. It was just insane. Even with Harvest there, it was still things I could upgrade every day. And that kind of makes it more interesting to play. But I mean, at some point, you'll reach the stage where it's like, okay, but well, I can get you know, one tier higher on the physical roll on my last Ghastly Jewel. At that point, it's like, it's not really interesting to bother anymore. But it's really nice to see like every upgrade, and it's something I really appreciate with minion builds compared to many many other builds. Uh, for me, it's mostly spell based builds where it's like, if I upgrade this, it's going to be a little bit more damage. But minion builds have such an impact on every upgrade. It feels like getting one more modifier on a jewel, or you know, putting that in the darkness and throne, and uh, Gene Stewart yeah. is massive. Like everything is so has a, such a Im massive impact, especially the shield that like, we're talking about as well. Like. With the blocking spell damage, with the way the bone offering and everything uh, stacking up with it, and having that rely for recovery on block, that's great. But it would be insane if you have that together with a bunch of rest and a life roll, because it opens up so much more in the other slots. I think it's really nice to see this that, that type of upgrade path. Have you? Um... Yeah, and I didn't mention it. Is also the the animated guardian because you want the eighty five redeemer helmet. You need the. Uh, I think you need like a 78 hunter weapon, uh, and you need you you need to actually roll the culling strike on the gloves. Mm. Uh, like that's a 250 mod with with zero tags. Uh, like that 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 took me 1,000 alterations. Mm. For solo cell found, that's most of them. If 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 you don't know how many that is, <laughs> that's most of them. <laughs> oh man, I remember rolling. Uh... Oh. I used to play standard when I started playing uh, eight years ago, and back you know when the Eternal Orbs was a thing for crafting, and uh, I was crafting the best amulet for SRS. No, it was before SRS. It was for Zombie Man, so I think it was actually the build before that. And uh, I was going to craft the best amulet for it, which essentially was just a bunch of HP, well, energy shield for the low life and um, resistances and attributes, and there was no imprint beast and stuff like that. So. So I started buying alterations since I was playing trade, right? And I ended up spending 150,000 alterations yeah. on an amulet. <laughs> and I didn't finish God. it. 
<laughs> with alterations I did, but I didn't finish the item. <laughs> Just insane with some of the modifiers. And the best part for. about that is if you if you played like if you played like six months before that, you could get like some really crazy stuff on amulets. Like and in, in in like uh what is it? Is it standard? Is it what, I don't even know what it's called. The the, the league dump. I think it's standard. Yeah, it's yeah. standard. Yeah. Um, like I have I have amulets with seventy crit multi on them. Like you remember that one? Oh, oh boy, geez. those are pretty juicy. Yeah. Uh... There's, Oof. there's like, God, there's like 20 quantity belts, some shit like that. Uh, I think you could get, I think you could get 70, maybe even higher crit multi on quivers as well. Yeah, there was some stupid stuff there as well. And then you had the, um, I think quantity gem. Can't forget that one. Classic. Well, that was so common. Yeah. But I, I picked them all up because people would buy them for like a chaos. So I have like a, I have like a hundred of those in my stash. I think I had 25. I gave away most when I turned Legacy because I, I stopped playing standards. I gave away uh, everything to people that actually played in standard. <laughs> oh, man. Those are good days, I mean, though. Yeah, it's standard. <laughs> and people are complaining about crafting these days. <laughs> they don't know what, what we used to go through, man. <laughs> oh, there's another fun thing in uh, with minions. Uh, like, every gem is much better at 21. <laughs> so, like... Leveling gems is is such an experience all the time. Like I'm still leveling gems for my build right now. Yeah, I don't know. It's just like a lot of, a lot of things that are happening. Yeah. Some I think the best part with minions. Uh, sorry. Oh, I was gonna go totally on a tangent, so go for it. <laughs> like I think the the best thing with minions for me as a guide creator, right, is the um the fact that minions unlike most other builds we use like mechanics from every corner of the game like like ailment stacking on the bone chill skitter bots for example and you know trigger crafts for automation for exposure unless you're using e elemental army like there's so there's such a vast majority of different mechanics that we're abusing uh, different ways of triggering elemental equilibrium Keeping that in mind on top of scaling your minions, I think it's just such an insanely fun genre of builds to create build guides for in general with all the mechanics and then sitting down there making a guide for it just to try to explain everything. I think that's really fun, actually. What was yeah, it's a big part of it. Um, so I wanted to just say a few a few fun things that I tried um, with, with the Dom Blow build because just because I didn't like them doesn't mean they weren't good. Um, so I noticed that the area of effect is a really big deal on the melee splash. Uh, like I had for a time, I was getting the extra specter by specking to it. And then I got the minion area nodes and everything was frozen. Like nothing would come into attack range with those area nodes. So like, uh, they have a pretty big defensive weighting. Because all of them, you, you're always, you, like, Domblo's a minion skill, so you're always recently thing. So it's like, what is it, 45 AoE or something? And that's that's on a minion that I think has, like, 10 from the quality on the gem. <laughs> like, it's like not, not a lot. Mm. Um, and, yeah, I was, when I ended up getting my Ray Spectre to 21, uh, I had four Spectres for a while. I didn't know about the Crush Claw because that's not well documented. People yeah. found out the Crush Claw is is 50% more cold damage through testing, like the, in PvP. Like, like yeah. fuck me, right? Like, how how are these mechanics that obscure, right? Like, anyway. Um, so I was using the Frenzy Charge Chieftain, the Power Charge Chieftain, the Arena Master. And when I unlocked the fourth Spectre, because I did have the, the Spectre node, um, I was using the, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, I think it's called Thay of Tool. Yeah. The, 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 the cold vortex thing that, um, not the actual vortex skill, just looks like a vortex. Yeah. yeah. That gives you the stationary spell dodge. Mm. Right. So I was doing that. Uh, and I was using uh, Nightblade on my Whirling Blades for uh, uh, Elusive. Mm -hmm. So you could actually get, like, with that, with the Quartz and with the Pantheon 
uh, 5% and 5% if you took a savage hit recently, you can get like 60 spell dodge on this build. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a lot. <laughs> it's pretty insane. I was thinking with the AOE yeah. you mentioned, um, like in um, in a softcore trade, getting a woke melee splash, it, it's like, it's just a couple of chaos. It's super cheap. Almost nobody cares about it. I don't I don't even know what a woke melee splash is. What does that even do? Uh, it's just bigger, essentially. <laughs> oh. Let me get the numbers. Better. Uh, the numbers are saying... Stop using the, the Thay of Tool because I couldn't see the screen. Like, oh, spell yeah, dodge no, doesn't matter. If, if, what, if what you die, you just can't see it. Right? So... But I think they'd be really overpowered if... Like, if you could tune the graphics to make stuff like that invisible oh. um like i actually think the only the only thing stopping dominating blow from being not just a meta build like the meta build i think it's like one of the best builds in the game i think the only mm -hmm. thing stopping from being the meta build is the fact that the visibility is quite bad oh yeah it's not the worst but it's 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 not good but there's a yeah. saying in in poe where it's like the less you can see on the screen when you're playing, the better your build is. So that kind of goes hand in hand with how good DB actually is, right? Yeah. Because I mean, the better visual clarity you have, the shittier your build most likely is. Um, the number difference between Melee Splash and Awakened Melee Splash is uh, pretty goddamn insane. I'm looking at level 5 though, with 20 quality versus a 21 with 20 quality Melee Splash. And a 21 melee splash has 60% more area, whilst the woke one has 72% more melee splash area. And it has 2% yeah. less damage. Yeah, but still, that's that's a, that's a more multiplier. So if you get those area nodes, it's like the the increased when you have none is, yeah. is also not exactly a more, but very close. Yeah, right? that's true, true. No, I think it's really good either way, but um, coal converted minions right now. The last couple of leagues has just been so massive, especially as soon as you have like host chieftains helping out with a little bit of crit, just freeze everything. Spectre build right now in the higher budget stages, they're like you you shatter everything two screens away. The only thing you're doing is running around picking up loot in the map. Pretty beautiful. And that in that in hand also acts as a pretty yeah. massive defensive layer. Because I remember uh, racing in hardcore uh, a couple of years ago, uh, where the meta was BV or EK. I think it was BV. Uh, um, Templars, and we we took like a Lord of the Rings walk all the way to Mortar to pick up the face Acro Acro on the tree, um, starting as a Templar, and we had like five thousand HP with like a buffer of one thousand energy shield, and just dodge on top of that. And the defense uh, scaling we used was freeze everything, shatter the rooms. You're never gonna die. And that's how many people went to level 100 with, uh, with that during races. It was pretty cool, actually. So if you're curious, the, the Lightning Strike build from last league that I didn't end up playing, yeah. it was a, um, a Gladiator, actually. And instead of getting the Bleed Pops, it just got the Attack Speed Multiplier nodes. And it got uh, Max Block, Max Spell Block. You get a Life on Block Shield. And one thing I noticed is that uh, it's pretty easy to cap dodge and spell dodge. Mm. You have challenger charges. Yeah. Um, and lightning strike wants to get the uh, pierce two extra targets. So you can actually get cap spell. You can get phase acro, skipping acrobatics. If you use a, I think it's thread of hope, thread of hate. I forget what it's called. Yeah, thread of hope. And it actually hits, it hits uh acrobatics as well as the pierce two targets node so you save like four points as well and uh you can use lightning strike with a claw claw nodes are probably the best on the skill tree so you can go crit and you can use the trinity thing with two elements to go uh lightning and cold and shatter everything that's actually pretty smart i'm normally not very comfortable on the southern side of the uh skill tree personally it's something i touch it every now and then but it's not something i have extensive experience with i try to stay on the northern side you know templar witches and shadows mostly some science but um as soon as i go into like marauders and duelist or rangers i'm like i'm very careful when i make builds with it because like you know i spend an extra day glancing over it because i don't have you know years the fun years of experience with them <laughs> 
Have you um have you tried last epoch by the way? Nah. Have you seen it? Like anything you consider? Fun. Uh, a little bit. It's it's uh it's hard to engage with the game if you haven't played it before. So I haven't watched anyone play it for a long period. That's fair. That's fair. And I just had a recent pretty big patch as far as playing today. Um. All right. Mm. So the at the um, sorry. I want to mention a few things uh with with the build still because I I yeah, think there's there's a few things that, I mean so like, like I watch a lot of content creators do videos and stuff. Even though I know, like, 95% of everything they say, because I'm usually watching, uh, you know, build guides or some kind of builds for things that I'm pretty familiar with most of the time. But, like, the, the 5% is, like, it's always the next level, right? Mm. So I, 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 don't, I don't mean to explain things. It's just, you know, maybe it hasn't been considered. Maybe some chat doesn't know about it. Um. But actually, uh, I really like uh, Ruthless for bossing. So I, I put in Ruthless for Melee Splash because uh, it it does... Uh, like, the, the damage is actually pretty good. It's a competitive gem for damage, especially at 21. It gains a lot of 21 compared to other gems going to 21. Mm -hmm. um, but it does the bigger hit. So if, if you use Ruthless instead of uh, Melee Splash, especially for me because I have Behead, uh, I can suddenly freeze bosses, like most of them, actually. Like even even 83 bosses, they get frozen, um, just because the it, it increases the the maximum range. Like you have you're hitting so often, so if if every third hit actually gets a crit with like the crit multi, mm -hmm. like that that seems to hit a pretty nice threshold on freezing really high HP targets right now. And I know they did something as well this patch with uh, freezing high tier bosses. I don't know the numbers behind it, but I, I have seen it. Yeah, it's just the so ailment thresholds have been generally lowered across the board. Yeah. And the other thing is, um, I like carrion golem for like post your POB, but man, there's no chance I'm playing carrion golem <laughs> <laughs> for like if okay if I'm doing like a boss and it's just the boss and have minion uptime, it's fine. But um, a lot of people don't know the the taunt. It, like taunt is not just hey attack me. Uh, taunt actually reduces damage taken for all the other targets by ten percent. So you want you want your minions to taunt as fast as possible. And the the stone golem uh, they actually increased their aggro range. Mm -hmm. uh, and the stone golem um, one one of his attacks just taunts. It's not it's not like your jewel like you know, 6% chance to taunt. No, it just taunts. So if, if you lead with a taunt, that's a lot of extra survivability. And that's why, uh, even though I have the jewel, which is like percent taunt, percent blind, um, I like having the totem, uh, sorry, the, the stone golem, which is guaranteed taunt. And that's why I really like the animate guardian um, with the, the blind. So the animate guardian has like a, I think it's like a 25 chance to blind on, because I crafted... Uh, the blind chance on top of the uh, intimidate chance, mm -hmm. um, plus the jewel. So like my anime guardian has like thirty something percent chance to blind, and my stone golem just taunts. So like right when I engage a boss, it's blinded and taunted right away. It's none of that like six eight percent crap. I I I don't want to, I don't like to rely on that. Like I think the difference is rather large um, when when you consider that it's it's not just like a normal character, right? Like these are these are cat block life on block characters. The only way you're gonna die is if you get killed in one hit. Yeah. Like this this character does not die to like a multitude of his. It doesn't happen. Yeah. So getting those up right away is is something you can rely on. Otherwise, you can't rely on them. So I, I don't know. I would like Carrion Golem. I think is like a two point two point five percent, two point six percent type of damage increase. That's pretty crap in my book. Yeah, definitely. I think that uh, what you bring up is uh, is um really good because it's like when i play hardcore especially for the upcoming gauntlet uh, event now from sis for example like i'll be definitely be using uh stone golem if i play a minion build like there, there's no way i'm playing a hardcore league where me dying <laughs> is resulting in me starting over um i don't want to do that and um 
not using a stone golem because of the value it brings not just a life region when it comes to damage over time effects and all of those aspects but because of that efficiency of the increase the the speed of getting that taunt out is so crucial in hardcore for a lot of builds to alleviate a lot of risks it doesn't mean that you're going to die if you don't use it obviously but it does alleviate a lot of risk when you're moving into fights especially with dumb blow for like faced bosses where you don't have any other minions surviving there with your five to eight percent chance to taunt or more in uh, darkness and throne for example you're gonna go in there smack your worms out and start hitting whilst the boss is swinging at you before you get your minions out that then has to hit to get the taunt out yeah no in hardcore i'd rather not but well in softcore it's it's like very different like you mentioned before people are uh, more interested in scaling out their and uh, not just pub numbers because i've been uh, very annoyed with a lot of like build guide creators that they are inflating their dps you know like leaving vol haste on or you know uh, displaying their dps with the uh, inaccurate dps uh, displays in the configuration i don't, I don't think vol haste is is a problem I, right. look dude like outside of serious bosses are not staying alive more than 10 seconds and i don't know what you game you're playing that's a pretty legitimate check mark in my in my mind <laughs> i just saw Valhaze being active in your pov every... <laughs> I'm, so I think I'm okay with it i stand behind it stand behind it <laughs> okay but what i say inflated dps is like say you have all your minions out your Valhaze versus things like mo most people that are following a build guide they, they'd be like killing Sirius. hopefully they wouldn't be doing like other bosses like sure you have the dps versus a map boss but you don't you're not gonna have all haste up on all faces versus a series for example um but yeah like there there are some bill guides in the past not so much these days though because it's kind of been called out by a lot of people on reddit uh and other people have been actually calling other people out for it but it's been kind of decreased but there's been builds in the past where the, where they have all haste all righteous fire you know, the boss is shocked to, you know, 300% because they can, and, you know, like completely unrealistic situations, then it's just not going to happen versus certain most of the end game bosses. Like Vol Haste is fine for most bosses, but if you bring in Vol Haste for, as a DPS calculation saying, I'm going to do this much damage versus uh, Uber Elder, that's not going to work because you're not going to have Vol Haste up for all faces. And same thing with Sirius, for example. So that's what I'm referring to when I'm uh, when I'm saying inflate to DPS numbers. But either way, it's like in softcore, it's all about damage. People would rather use, or most people, from my understanding, would rather use a carrying golem, even it's if, even if it's one percent more damage over a little bit of life region, because that extra damage is in most people's eyes worth more than the life region and taunt that the stone golem would bring, which is kind of weird, because. Like in, in more cases than not, it's it's obviously better to make sure you have uptime of DPS rather than you wasting a portal and have to restart the fight again, right? Last phase is only um, phase that I matters. Think it, I think it does go to, to POBs being competitive. Um, like if you make if you make a, guild, a, a build guide on a Dom Blow and someone else makes it and yours has 20% more life, and there's this two percent more damage. I would bet you that people would more likely go for the two percent more damage version. And like for mm. for the golem choice, it's 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 like what ten percent more regen and a faster, more reliable ten percent less damage taken versus two point five percent more damage. Right. Yeah. That's that's a pretty clear choice in, in my mind. Uh, like I, I'm just gonna use a stone golem. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. I think it's, like, it's funny because a lot of my... Of POB wars, yeah. No, a lot of my guides, uh, I have a DPS optimal POB. That, that is what's being promoted. And then the guide itself is outlining different approaches, especially the Spectre build, actually. Because I saw a lot of people say, talking in the Global Channel um, a couple of weeks ago where they said that my Spectre build was squishy. Uh, and my POB that I'm displaying is literally like, this is the glass cannon, low body style. Like, this is the DPS you can like, push if you want to push it but you're going to get squishy out of it and then if you look at the actual guide it's like well if you want to be tanky you have this and this and the, these options you can do this or that you can choose not to run necromantic ages you can use necromantic ages you can use bone offering uh, you know all of those things you get a life recovery on block shield spell block shield all of those things it starts outlining all of these different approaches and if you're going into a higher budget you can start using you know glorious vanity for divine flash stacking chaos rest and suddenly your build is very tanky uh compared to the initial pub but that initial pub makes it competitive like you mentioned 
Yeah. Uh, I also, uh, I tried the Worm Flask. I hate the Worm Flask. I don't know why you're still using it. I think it's okay with the Herald of Purity, but you're not using that anymore. I actually kind of like it. I hate it. It's... I was even considering using oh, two for serious. Like the, the but, things... Uh... You have to oh, keep no in mind chance. that you have... Um... Like, I think you have... I think, I think like, you have a, a lot more attack I think you have too speed. much of a focus on spawning more minions. Yeah, but you have too much of a focus on spawning more dominating blow minions, while I think you just need to focus more on having them not be dead. Uh, like, like I, I do serious with, with nine minions every phase. Yeah, well, it's like you so, mentioned, uh, we've been comparing, comparing the Guardian version with the Necromancer version. Uh, I should have tested it today, but, well, last epoch took over, so I'll be doing it tomorrow, actually. And I'm pretty sure that it's going to be a pretty clear, distinct uh, decision to move it over to a Necromancer, which will actually bring that specific solution in mind, uh, with them just straight up not dying anymore. Uh, but I don't know, I kind of like it. It's nice to start a map up where you, if the first pack you encounter is a blue magic pack, and you don't necessarily do plenty of damage yourself to bring it down effectively. And it's pretty nice. But then again, you have a Primal Crush Claw and whatnot. You have the Taunter and the Stone Golem. So I guess it's a bit of a different experience, the first initial pack you encounter compared to the uh, less defensive styled uh, softcore variant of it. No, I think I think you missed it. Go, go to my POB and check the Holy Relics damage. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you talked it's about, like, yeah, okay, but like your build... 300,000. <laughs> you have to keep like in mind. Like it just one shot the blue. <laughs> You have yeah. to keep in mind that your build is um, a little bit better gear than what I was showing in the Zero to Hero project. I mean, I'm wearing a tablet even if I can buy a six link for 10 chaos. That's <laughs> I mean, true. my old relic is not doing that much damage in that on that project. <laughs> it's far less than that. But granted, I'm talking about like high tier red maps. Obviously, the character that I've I been... think uh, it probably still do. It probably still do like a hundred thousand or so, which is a lot. Like. Like if you think of, like if you look at those, like even the shield throw gladiators, that some of those guys have like five, six hundred k DPS, period. Like that's, that's that's it. That's all they do, right? And they they're just clearing maps pretty quickly. Yeah, they have explosive chests, but clearly that's killing the monsters to begin with to start the explosions, right? I mean, it's not. <laughs> yeah. You can't do the corpse explosions if nothing is dying. So. Like, obviously, if you're like, yeah, my build does 600k DPS, people are going to laugh at you these days. But, I mean, yeah. that's enough to, to play the game. Undoubtedly. Kind of slowly against bosses, but against not bosses, it's fine. I'm um, looking at the POB that I imported, I put in my YouTube video for it. Uh, assuming we don't have frenzy charges up. Obviously, this is a Guardian version as well. So, going to keep that in mind. So, I don't get the plus two extra levels and all those things. The average hit damage from the from the minion is 34k. And with frenzy charges, 38 uh and that is with ee -E up intimidate chill chalk feeding frenzy so essentially basically everything that we should have in the first half second you start attacking right no the the crush claw does this thing right away yeah that's like the true. first thing you're going to hit in a map is going to have 50 percent damage taken that's you can't true. rely on that throughout the map but that is something you can rely on on the first hit and bosses that is very true so it's like 50 percent increase in that so that puts me on 60k average um with the trigger rate with your hitting with the weapon. So it's, it's not that bad, actually. It's not that bad. I want to see what level that is, actually. It is... That is a level 18 Holy Relic. With that current uh, yeah. project. So Necromancer is going to have uh, five levels on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's absolutely disgusting. But yeah, I mean, this here to Hero project has been really fun to do, actually, just to show people how you can progress with a recess class. But essentially, sell, uh, not sell self done, but it's like, not, and normally the way I play is like profit crafting. I, I'm okay with paying my six portals to finish a map if it means that I don't have to waste my currency, and I'd rather put that into investments. And then when I have 100 or 200 X, then I can make a high body build and, you know, everything will be fine. But this project was really fun because I forced myself not to do that. And I was just like, I'm going to play it as if it, if it was all cell phone. And I will only buy things when it's time for me to get very specific things. Like I did chose to choose to run the writing jar. Um, what else did I buy? I bought a Scourge Claw because of like two chaos. And it was a cheap way to get decent damage um, out of the build as well. So it's just very, very straightforward, simple things. I uh, bought a Roomies for three or four chaos as well. The stuff like that is the, the only things I've been Yeah, I, I guess the Scourge Claw is 
fine. Honestly, no. I would buy I would buy like a one elk uh Gemini claw with twenty seven attack speed and just craft minion minion damage on it. Yeah, that's absolutely another option as well. How much like, is I, the minion damage craft, by the way? I think it's 58, 59, the craft on it. Because there's one for one exalted. I must what? have time to gather my will. Minion damage. I don't have the highest tier, do I? Isn't there one that costs an exalted? Or am I going like, crazy? I, think... uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I don't think it costs an exalted. There is a rank three from the Atzwaddle Temple, uh, tier three room hatchery. Yeah. The tier two. The tier two is two Alks. Uh, one handed weapon is 35 to 44% mini damage, which is fine, to be honest. Oh, it's definitely less damage than the Scourge, but uh, life on hit, mana on hit is like huge quality of life. Mm -hmm. no like my, my Whirling Blades on my character costs, costs one mana, so I just. I just whirling blades constantly and have like a thousand life per second from the life on hit and mana is endless. Yeah. Nah, it's really comfortable. Without a doubt. Um, on another topic though, so we talked about dominating blow quite a lot. I wanted to ask you with the upcoming changes to like the Atlas and whatnot, uh, since you, you play one character each league, right? Um, mm -hmm. how do you feel about the, the, what people refer to as the chore of running the entire Atlas line? They're going to cut it down. So it's like half the amount of work, but like, do you feel that that was, that is needed or did you enjoy the current way of the Atlas? Cause I've been hearing different opinions on that. I think, uh, I think it takes too long to get all the crap going. It feels like you're not really playing the game well until you have most of the maven passives in your area until you have like a couple of the global maven passives so i think that takes way too much time like even though i i understand these factors and i try to get like care on a stick gear curve for my characters and all that i am still reaching that point like three levels before I am bored of the league. So like the, the amount of time where I feel like I'm playing efficiently to the point where I quit is too short. Yeah. Like no. That needs to be way longer. So I think I think reducing the regions accomplishes that. Um because you don't have to do so many different regions to play efficiently with the map masters. Like instead of doing like three or four regions, I'm hoping I'm hoping at least that you can just do like one or two and just do your thing as you want it. Um, so I don't know. I think Chris said that this next patch is just going to address a number of things, but I think he said the patch after that is like the new mechanic. Is, am, I, am I wrong about that? Or is 316 new new mechanic? Uh, to my understanding, it was the other uh, change was coming with 3.16 and 3.17 was the uh, complete end game rework, right? So having that as an integrated. Right, right, right. So yeah, I think I think the four regions thing is is a band aid fix basically. Mm -hmm. That's, that's kind of how I'm taking it. No, it definitely seems to be at least. It's actually uh, pretty interesting. Um, I know Grimbro was talking to we had a couple of meetings leading up to the interview we did with him with Chris Wilson, and we talked about the differences between a band aid uh, as a, a band aid thing compared to the core problem or the disease behind it, right? And the bad name is not going to fix the disease, but it might look good on the outside, right? <laughs> and it seems like that a lot of people are so hell-bent on trying to make the bandage look super good. Like, we don't have to go in and talk about crafting too much. We even nibbled a little bit on it, but I'm thinking like harvest and stuff like that. Uh, people have seemed to be very very picky about making sure that they, they want their band-aid to be like the pristine bandage, right? Whilst no one really seems to, well, a lot of people don't seem to want to fix the actual problem that lies underneath. Uh, especially, especially, I can't even speak anymore. Sorry, <clears throat> it's getting late. Um, that's true. It's just before getting too like philosophical on it, it's like at the end of the day, Poe is trying to sell like 
a fun experience. They're trying to sell like joy, basically, right? Yeah. They're 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 in the joy business, and like what I what I enjoy playing is not the same as what other people enjoy playing. So every every time they make a change, they're just kind of guessing. They're they're guessing that more people will like it than not, and they're hoping that those that will not like it won't hate it. Yeah, essentially. Right? Right. So they're just kind of, they're, they're kind of guessing at the end of the day. So I think Band Aid is kind of like a if if you consider like the volume of game development time finite, it's kind of like uh, a cheap feeler. Like you hmm. know, you can you can throw a mechanic in a different direction temporarily and see if more people like it or not. Yeah. So it has it has its, it has its purpose in some ways. And I think I heard Chris Wilson say that uh, they're planning so many things for 316. They're at a point where they're not sure if they can do them all. So, I mean, I mean in that context, a Band-Aid fix on anything sounds okay. <laughs> yeah. It's not like, yay, Band-Aids! But it's <laughs> like, you know, you got to be realistic at the end of the day. Uh, they did mention that he, um, or Chris Wilson did mention in at some point, I don't remember where, he said that the nerves for the in, uh, upcoming changes that they wanted to stay staying true to their philosophy or, and their direction where they want to take the game coming into 3.15 came to the point where they added um, a tad bit too much or too many of these nerves without the counterpart that needed to be there uh, for example with the defensive uh, scaling that we're lacking for some uh, quite a few bills obviously not db bill specific since we talked about that a lot but um like there's a lot of defensive scaling issues for plenty of builds uh, with the changes that they've introduced to the game and they had uh, countermeasures for this to basically make up for that through other means and that didn't come into 3.15 whilst the actual core nerf did uh, so they did mention that a bit too much came in and they're just trying to make sure that they approached it in the right way so when he says that there's too much to do for 3.16 and then we get a bandit solution. I'm I'm pretty happy here because <laughs> if they didn't, they would. I, I think I, uh, I think the last patch was just a little undercooked. I think they needed like another week on it. There's a lot of things that I don't think they addressed. Mm. Uh, like you know, I started the league with the absolution in mind because I want to try a new skill. <laughs> and like in 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 the skill release. Like Chris Wilson says, we want to make a spell version of Dominating Blow, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's not like, here's a skill that does something, give it a try, right? It's like, this is going to be the spell version of Dominating Blow. It's going to be like an equivalent type of skill, yeah. right? No. It, it, okay, I played Absolution, and they changed the difficulty of the game, so I just thought the difficulty of the game was absolutely crazy. Like, I'm, <laughs> wow, like, wow, they made this game so hard. I can't, I can't, I can't even... I can't even properly do white maps, right? Like, wow, this is really hard. And then I take the dominating blow gem and I put it in the absolution gem. Like, two of the links don't even work. And my build is is nothing to do with dominating blow, right? It's an absolution build. Uh -huh. And then I start doing a map and I'm clearing it five times faster. I'm not joking, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Did you look at the absolution I using... numbers? Like, before you start playing? I? Uh, they they dig it out. How am I supposed to do that? Um, PUED really. digs it out to the GGPK file. Uh, you can't you can't tell because they they always have their own base damage, so the the damage is actually an additive on top of that, and then now it has like a four hundred multiplier. Until I put it in POB, it doesn't mean anything, right? A PUE, PUEB but, is yeah, usually but... using the same numbers from PUEDB. Oh, I don't know. But... I thought it for minions it was a little different, but. I don't know. In Maybe. very few cases, uh, there is. But like, I spoke to Chris Wilson because when they introduced the Reaper and Absolution, the first thing I wrote to him was like, a bit of an angry message. I was like, yo, okay, I've asked for this for six years now. Uh, where's the minion info? See, Mark was going to give it to me, but they apparently they ended up having some problems with something that they had to prioritize, or they would have to delay the league launch, which took priority, obviously. So we didn't get it. So we, the only information we got was the uh the information that they dug out of the ggpk file from pwdb and i just looked at the numbers and i was like they can triple this damage and it would still be shit. i'm not gonna touch it and then we started the league and everyone was complaining of how bad absolution was <laughs> and then the four times damage buff comes in <laughs> and people still tell me that it's it's you know it's barely okay now <laughs> it's still terrible <laughs> have you tried it after the buff by so the way? i think the damage 
Uh, just testing. I think the damage is, is about the same. Excuse me. Um, but the the absolution minions are like not smart. Like uh, I actually talked to Chris Wilson about this uh, in private. And it, it, with minions, it's not just the numbers game, right? Mm -hmm. Like dominating blow minions, they're like near slave drivers in terms of wanting to destroy everything on the screen, right? Dominating mm -hmm. blow minions don't like anything. They just want to get rid of it, right? They're like super aggressive minions. And absolution minions, they just fucking stand there. They're like your bro. Like if you're not if you're not like actively hitting something, they're not gonna touch anything else on the screen. So like like what are you supposed to do with that, right? You can't just address that with the numbers change. Like okay, you, you make the damage three times higher, you're still people are still not gonna use it because it's just it's just not very good to clear. Yeah. No, I completely agree with you. It's uh <laughs> It's kind of a good way to describe them when you're kind of forced to use um there there's quite a few minions that is out there, at least with spectres as well, where we've been forced to use feeding frenzy on them. Otherwise they did they just don't work. And if you don't use feeding frenzy, you have to use predator. And when a minion that is never supposed to be a defensive design minion requires that kind of support gem to make them, you know, uh, make them actually function in terms of the AI, uh, then it's just really, really sad to see. It's like forcing yourself in when you're leveling through the axe, sitting on your four link, eventually maybe a five before you maybe get a tabula or whatever the progression you're going for, have to use a feeding frenzy or a predator. I don't know. That just makes the entire leveling experience even worse than it already is. It just feels bad to give up a gem. Yeah. I don't like feeding frenzy for that. There should be there should be a, a gem that gives you some damage and makes minions aggressive. Like yeah. even if it's like a four to five style, like a twenty percenter, it just wouldn't feel bad to use it, right? I've always preached. feeding frenzy is clearly made to use on support minions. Yeah. I know we're not gonna get more much much changes to that because the added predator and feeding frenzy meet you, right? Like uh, something I preached about in the past was that when we have a minion, we would get you know three different versions or two different versions: one that's aggressive, one that's the defensive. And just okay, you summon it with that that mentality done. Uh, but you know that didn't happen. <laughs> Instead, we got two support gems. I, I don't mind. I think Predator is really good in general. The problem with Predator with the damage scaling you get from it, especially with the quality ones, when it comes to the actual damage scaling numbers for single target boss fights, it, it can be really, really good. The problem is that it's going to take up another key that you have to use. And minions, even with trigger spells, yeah. there's still so many abilities that we're using. It's not like the usual mobility skill, hold down right click, loot a little bit, you know, mobility skill, hold down right click. It's like <laughs> for 50 other buttons you need to press when you play in a minion build, which makes it a lot more fun to play, but <laughs> there's no room for a 51. Um, there's another thing I wanted to mention with the, with the, I guess, minion builds in general, but primarily Dom Blow is affected because you usually want to ramp up in minions. Um, so this is another reason why I will never use that flask, uh, at least on an end game. Uh, and especially if I'm not using Herald of Purity. Herald of Purity, I think there's an argument yeah. because uh, Herald of Purity is like pretty high damage ramp and it's front loaded because they. Um, but that's another thing with Domblo. When the minions spawn, their skills are not on cooldown. So if you hit a pack of like 30 monsters, what happens is you get like a few Domblos and then they kill something with their slam. And then you get new dom blows, and then they kill something with their slam, and then you get new dom blows, and then they kill something with their slam. And mm. the slam is like fifty percent more damage than the regular attack. Yeah. Uh, so that's pretty sweet, actually. That's like a hidden damage boost against trash that doesn't really show in POB. Like it, dominating blows, is, the more you know, the better. The better it seems to be, actually. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. But um, one thing that I really like to do, and it wouldn't work so well with the flask, is uh, uh. I do the convocation after I have full Domblo minions on the boss, and then I just go to the other side of the boss, and then the boss doesn't hit me with anything because it it's just getting chain taunted by the little minions. Mm. And I I try not to attack with dominating blow at that point. Like it's it's a bit of a dynamic play style to be a dominating blow character and not use dominating blow, but it plays into defensive mechanics as well as like the behead mechanics I was telling you about. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I tried behead a couple of times. Uh, obviously, this was tested on the uh, Zero to Hero project I did with like <laughs> the trashiest gear you can find, uh, and it was just 
terrible, 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 terrible. But I did semi juice uh, a lower tier map though, which is just to get the uh, the effects going with a bunch of rares and all that. And suddenly it was it was very noticeable when you had just a little bit of juice was enough to make it noticeable. But I mean. <laughs> Any anywhere before that happens, I did not like using behead at all. It felt like a complete waste of a gem. But I can see it being extremely yeah. nice with a properly juiced higher end game mapping for sure. I think just the faster you move through the map, the the better it is, and the less you have to down below, the better it is. Yeah, I kind of like the the whirling blade setup. Something I was a little bit concerned with when uh, when we talked about it first was the whole idea of it, like okay. I, the only way I'm going to get fortified now is if I have my Kingmaker, and I'm not really comfortable doing that right now. Especially not when I'm scaling crit. I don't like having a Kingmaker on AG for the sake of just giving me fortify and culling, right? So um, it, it took some uh, time to get used to, um, to do that approach. And then I was like, why am I even stressing about this? All I have to do is just smack that fortify in the main links, and I'm done with it. <laughs> That softcore mentality of yeah, just pushing numbers. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So I originally it's, I didn't even have it. Yet. Instead of like thirty-five, right? I mean yeah. that you feel that a little, but again, it's it's what I was telling you. Those minions are getting the fortify, so it's yeah. no, it's, it's a give big. and take. No, for sure. No, so it's like it's it's one of those things. Like I think I spent almost two years now in softcore. And it, it's more often than not, I feel like I'm catching myself off guard with like, oh, wait, now that softcore mentality is kind of <laughs> seeping through this entire build. Let's uh, let's have another look at it <laughs> before we make it public. And that's pretty funny, actually, to go through that step. Um, I don't know. Very nice. Do you have anything else you want to talk about? What? Um... Oh, yeah. I saw you as Ancestral Cry. What the hell? What is that thing? Yeah. Um, Ancestral Cry is the... Um... I'm going to read it. <laughs> Hold on. Um, it taunts their enemies. You get some armor. Like, yeah. do you use it for... It taunt is bad, though. The taunt is bad, yes. Uh, so it's not something that I want to have on left click when it comes to bosses. I tried having it because I think most people in the Zero to Hero project, not sure if you saw the videos, but I kept it in case, um, uh, I guess I think that most people that would play a bit like this yep. wouldn't bother changing it, right? But it's really nice for clearing. But uh, the way you have Behead with extra melee stra uh, range is just, it's basically what the answers of Cry is doing for me. Is I get the uh, exerted attacks hitting additional targets, and the splash from those targets allows me to hit more targets, oh. as well as the extra melee strike range. So I think it's just really smooth. Uh, besides the the extra armor, so as soon as you start a map, you have your ancestor cry out. You go to the first pack, and no matter how big that pack is, you're gonna hit everything in that pack. And then you start this wave in, in your initial start of your DB. Conversion right where you take the first pack that died and then they slam the next one right because you've hit everything in that pack So it's pretty smooth in that sense. It's not really Mandatory or anything. It's just a quality of life thing But I don't think it should be used versus bosses because of the taunt mechanic that's in it Yeah, but if you uh if you put elemental uh, army in that uh, you're gonna so the reason your monkeys are dying is because they're not resist cap, by the way. It's just oh, yeah, yeah, gonna, definitely. Uh, monkeys have no resist. I think they have, like, some cold resist or something. So your your monkeys have 30% resist. So that's that's really bad, right? Uh, if you put uh, elemental army in there, um, yeah, your specters are not going to die, and you're going to get 10% uh, resist debuff. And the, the plus minion things, that works on support gems as well. So you don't have to get it to 21 for the 5% uh, max, which is really nice. Yeah. Yeah, they're, uh, they're sitting on 75% fire us. That's all they have. My biggest problem with the Carnage Chieftain was actually Expedition Content or Encounters and um, Lightning Harvest. And I think that all of those situations get sold by the Necromancer by default, to be honest. The block from Bone Offering and all that that we talked about. I think that those things just completely removes the, the risk of them dying and the elemental army fixes the resistance sure but they just took way too much damage from physical damage sometimes and 
and lightning was one of the bigger ones um what is that guy called the uh setosh i think it's called the uh, breach boss could also screw him over but that's also something that ea would actually solve as well due to lightning resistance right but i don't know like the more i've been looking at it the more i feel like like you talked about in the start as well where how the impale version or cold conversion doesn't really matter but how little requirement and how lazy the guardian version can be whilst the necromancer as soon as you just start spending a handful of chaos on the build the uh, the necromancer just starts getting better and better and it doesn't take much to be on par with the guardian and then it goes really quickly way above what the guardian can achieve and i think that's really nice to see I mean, I think the way you presented it, like, I don't think I've ever seen you pitch the Domblo build outside of a league starter. If you're pitching it as a league starter, a Guardian is, is totally, totally good. Oh, like, yeah. If, you, if you're not going to spend on on this character at all, and its only purpose is to get stuff for your next character, yeah, just go Guardian. But yeah. I think some people are, are going to get sucked into the play style. Because okay, <laughs> this is... My Domblo character, this league, is the strongest character I've ever played. I've never played a stronger character than this one. Like, I... Like, so my, my character has, like, 1,100 life on block. I have 8,300 life with the Juju thing. And none of my minions ever die to anything. Um, I only die to one-shots, and I really push content. So sometimes I do die to one-shots, to be fair. Yeah. Um, and like, obviously, you can die in Cirrus if you can't see the screen, and the visibility on Domblo is pretty bad. So yes, you can. You, you're going to have some challenging with bosses where visibility is really important. But sure, whatever. The rest, like the the the, the map clear. I don't know. It's just ridiculous. Like I, I've done 100% Delirious, and it feels like nothing. It just feels like a regular map. Oh yeah. It's just, everything's still frozen. Yeah, like the stability uh, of DB is something that's really, really hard to. Uh to tackle to be honest actually i'm looking forward to to trying it out in the necromancer version and it's like you said like the whole thing we're getting sucked into it because that's what happened to me like i, st I started playing it as a you know league start scenario you know, completely no investment nothing just just make this happen right kind of deal to show people how i would do it and then when we when you talked about the cold commercials like okay let's just fiddle around with it see where we go and it, you know it took me like five hours i'm already sitting here thinking okay well tomorrow I'm gonna look into a high budget version. How can I min max the shit out of this? Like that, I'm already at that point. <laughs> so I, I definitely can see that happen because it, it is a really fun build. It's very mechanically different. Well, excluding Absolution, but let's not talk about that. But it's mechanically different to many other uh, builds, but also specifically minion builds that has so many different uh, play styles in it already. So it's really fun. What's yeah, your uh, favorite agree. build up? It's been, it's been really good. Yeah. Well, what's your favorite build? Um, oh, if you don't, if you can't favorite. say DB. <laughs> uh, probably most fun build I played was uh, Burning Discharge, like way back in the day. Like Piety uh, days or it's later? It's really fun. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was just the idea, like, like back then, 10,000 energy shield with instant leech is uh, pretty much invincible uh not so much anymore but i mean back then kind of <laughs> and you just walk into something and one discharge everything on the screen is dead and this is in the time where you put a spark totem down and wait five seconds for it to actually kill things right yeah uh, rel relative to to the field i think that was my favorite build ever but um i don't know if i'd really go with the discharge play style again i don't like playing a build more than once um actually i don't think i ever have played a build more than once really? uh, like if like i'm not gonna play a domblo build again as good as it is it's just like i did it okay what's next i might play like a specter build again because specters are a little bit like one specter build is not the same as another specter build it's just very very different especially mm -hmm. with the different approaches you can use to the scaling the specters damage and the different characters you make my man uh, oh and, and on that <laughs> note when you were talking about um, you're talking about how you wish they had, like, the information in the game. Man, they are far from doing that. Like, think of the Crush Claw, right? Yeah. So, like, someone realized they had a debuff on the Crush Claw that had no information on the actual debuff. 
and they probably thought that those monsters hit too hard for the stats that they show on PoE DB. It's like, this mob is hitting a little too hard. I wonder if this debuff increases damage. Then, then they fucking rezzed one and went to PvP with their friend to do, like, a fucking science experiment to, like, do a damage distribution to understand that this debuff actually increases damage taken by 50%. Like... We're really far from getting accurate tooltips in game if people are are doing that, right? I like if if like the one guy didn't do that, I wouldn't even know to use that specter, and I'd be missing one third of my damage on this build. Yeah, like that that's where we're at. No, it's it's crazy. It's actually funny that you mentioned it, but I don't think that we're gonna see it in game uh, in tooltip at least. But it's something that I've been hammering on uh, Chris Wilson for years when it comes to these things. And the best that we've gotten after, so I think I nagged on him for a five and a half or six years now. And the best we've got is that the next time they introduce a new minion skill, they've said that they're going to make sure that we have the minion information before the gem launches, so to say. Which obviously doesn't help the massive problem of the Spectres. But that is something I talk to Chris quite regularly about. Um to see if we can find some sort of middle ground where that's going to be changed because something needs to happen like they, I don't know that they can't rework the Spectre Gem too much either because it's like there's so much going on with the Spectres and essentially that is supposed to be the Path of Exile version of Animate Dead from D2, right? So I mean, it's, it's really hard to find a middle ground where they can change something as well. Outside of just well, giving us the let's, info. let's also <laughs> consider the fact that the the un unequivocal best specter in the game is possibly the most confusing specter in the game. Like it, it it does a spell that procs three different attacks, but they have the same parameters. That's not on your deck, actually. It, it hits it hits a target. Oh, it's not. How does it work now? Um, so initially they had a spell that triggered three unique attacks and there's actually one more thing to that and that is that those three attacks don't hit unique targets properly but if you add GMP and more, more projectiles to them yeah they, they shotgun, shotgun a yeah. Little. yeah so a little <laughs> oh they shotgun all right um but they changed it um so that the spell turned to an attack the problem when they did that was that the specter started melee attacking if they were too close to the bosses and so it took them like two weeks from that to uh, so-called fix them. And the fix was to basically move the priority of the melee attacking. So they actually have an attack that is a um, not a ranged attack, but it is a ranged attack so that you can use Vicious Projectile without the downside of Vicious Projectile, for example, which then triggers these three unique attacks, which shotguns, right? So you can actually convocate them right on top of a boss. So they're still bugged. Uh, and they are like the difference. I was looking at the high, like super high budget mirror tier gear, and those specter scores like realistically around 100 million shaper DPS, and you get around half of that, if not less, with the second best specter. Yeah, so the initial attack is not projectile, so that you can use a uh, vicious bite for it, which lowers the attack speed. I see. Yeah. Um, I bet you that if you try hard enough, you can get dominating blow to 100 million. Because I got it to 20 with like 7k life, max block, and all that good shit. Like, pretty comfortable. Crit based or? Oh, yeah. Mm. Those, those, uh, Vengeful Commander, Vicious, <laughs> whatever. I don't know the name. Because I, I have one of them. That's all I know. I just use my Reforge crit on them. Because, uh, not like the, the, the Harvest Craft crit on them. Yeah. yeah. Because, uh, the Vengeful Commander is not that uncommon. It's, I think it's like one in 20, one in 30. But the, mm. the, the crit craft from harvest is not very common so it's not like i can roll it all day yeah no it's the the precise uh, command yeah, they're, been, they're really really good yeah i've been trying to get two of those and um i've been trying to get the assassin's mark instead of the elemental weakness mm. and i've been trying to get like bottled faith so if i if i actually get all of those things my domblo build is like around the 15 to 17 million mark on my ssf character That's and insane. like that's probably within reach. Like, I can probably do that around the time I hit level 100 if I just keep at it. Because I have one of the clusters. Um, I don't have Cortex, but I do have, like, 150 Xan emissions. So that's pretty good. <laughs> it's going to happen, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, I don't know. I think I've been unlucky on the ring. But, I mean, you can... 
That's it's hard. it's actually uh it's so much harder to craft uh, the shaper ring because it has like ten caster mods. Yeah. It's so, it's really easy to to craft like uh, hunter and redeemer. Undoubtedly, it's actually interesting because uh, like like I mentioned, tomorrow I'll be um, moving everything over to the necromancer and I'll be there crafting uh, a higher budget version for it. And uh, I'd assume with with your numbers that you talk about, you're only talking about one cluster, right? Like one cluster yeah. setup. Because I think in like maybe you can squeeze out two this out of is, it. This is with the consideration of of crush claw. Again, just just so we're clear. Yeah, yeah, no, of course, that's, of course. Like that's not a small part. That is that is a one hundred percent uptime single target damage buff. This is not a vol haste situation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's fair. I mean, if you're looking at min maxing DPS, you have to look at the like that that needs to be included as well. Uh, so it's gonna be fun. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to see if I can theory craft it. See where where it lands at least, and I mean then if the depending on how squishy the build will be, then that kind of will dictate if the build will function or not. Because the problem with DB is obviously is the essential requirement of being in range, right? So I mean at some point you can't go glass cannon, which you can do with specters as they will freeze everything. You don't have to be up in the faces of the enemies. So um, it's gonna be fun to see and. Um, See where I land and uh, where the balance will be, where it's going to be effective versus I'm just dying every time I go into a pack kind of deal. Hmm. I wonder if there's some like wild way to just go ES and just take on the top half of the skill tree. Because if you go the the life based, you're just not in range of the the cluster areas. Like everything costs more points. I haven't done the the crazy one. Like I'm not, I'm not playing a <laughs> mirror tier CI build in fucking <laughs> SSF. That's just not, not on the horizon, not in the cards. That's fair. Like the problem with CI is obviously the sustain in melee uh, has some crucial investments. I just use Aegis Aurora. Yeah. So you have to go for that, that kind of approach to fix it. But it's definitely something that uh, I think that needs to be gone around because if you can go with that then you even have the possibility for like 12 point clusters with vicious bite like we use on the god tier version of the specter version uh because you cross the near the minion stability ci as well as rt those are the three clusters that you're gonna go for so it's um very likely but uh, i i still think that based on what i've done with the specter build for that type of budget I still think that two clusters will be like the break point because after that you're taking a big too big of a loss in terms of defense. Maybe low yeah. life actually. Well cool. Uh again, not not something I've checked. That's that's your business, bro. Mm. Good luck with it. I'll be watching. <laughs> be I think I'm gonna call it. I do uh need a little bit of time before I start up tonight. So you're gonna go live sooner? Uh, half an hour, but I gotta, I gotta do dog. I want to try to try to get a bite to eat. All right, do so. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Take care. Thanks so much. All right, cheers.